football fans, this is Van Patrick inviting you to go back through the 1954 football season with the Detroit Lions. We'll review seven of the most exciting, most dramatic games as the Lions swept to their third consecutive Western Division Championship. These football highlights are presented through the courtesy of the Goebel Brewing Company. Now let's play football. Opening day found the Chicago Bears invading Briggs Stadium. And here's your play-by-play -play commentator, Jim Leeming, to tell you what happened. The world champion Detroit Lions begin the defense of their National Football League crown at Briggs Stadium before a hometown crowd that numbers in excess of 57,000 fans. Affording the opposition for the Motor City 11 will be the Chicago Bears. It's the Bears with the ball in the opening period. Rookie Chicago quarterback Zeke Bretkowski rifles a bullet pass to John Hoffman. The play covers 53 yards and it's goal to go for the Bears on the Detroit three yard line. When the big Lion line braces, the Bears go for a field goal. George Blanda's placement is good. Chicago leads 3 nothing. Later in the quarter, the Bears are on the prowl again. Bretkowski hoists a hefty heave to Harlan Hill. For rookies, these boys are performing like old pros. The play goes 64 yards for a touchdown, giving the Bears a surprising 10 to nothing advantage. The champion Lions aren't used to such treatment. On the following kickoff, they show that they too mean business. Bill Bowman takes the ball on the goal line, escorted by a pack of Lions. Bowman tears through the Bears on a 100 yard counting canter. Detroit trails now by 10 to 7. Anxious to spring an opening game upset, the Bears take to the air. Rutkowski heaves and then grieves as Bill Stitz intercepts for Detroit and carries to the Chicago 46. Stopped short of a first down, the Detroiters drop Jungle Jim Martin back for a 44-yard field goal attempt. Martin's kick is good. It's a toss over the Chicago signal calling chores. Blanda opens up with a pass to Harlan Hill that gains 39 yards and puts the ball deep in the Lions' den. Harry Jagadi plows across for the score as Chicago again grabs the upper hand by a 17 to 10 count. The Lions launch another come from behind drive that finds Doak Walker porting the pigskin 18 yards to the Chicago 49. Tom Dublinski fires a pass into the left flat. That's taken by Jug Gerard, and it's goal to go for Detroit. Detroit razzle-dazzle clicks for six on a Dublinski to Horschmeyer to Dibble pass play. At the end of the first half, it's a tie game. Detroit Lions 17, Chicago Bears 17. The victory-hungry Bears begin the second half impressively. George Blanda's short pass to Jim Dooley is turned into a long gain as Dooley dashes 42 yards to the Lions 14. Again, the Detroit forward wall holds, but no one can stop Blanda as his field goal gives the Bears the lead once more, 20 to 17. The Lions have been coming back every time, and they begin to do that again as Doak Walker shags Tom Dublinski's pass for a 53-yard advance deep into the lair of the Bears. Punchy Horsmeyer is a halfback turned passer today as he fires his second touchdown bomb of the game. This one to Bill Bowman puts the Lions on top, 24 to 20. Another Chicago field goal narrows the Lion lead to one point, but the Detroiters are out to increase their advantage in the final period as Horsmeyer skips 35 yards to the Bears' 38. The Lions roar for more, and that's what they get as Tom Dublinski and Lou Carpenter team up on a 13-yard TD toss that makes it Detroit 31, Chicago 23. Later in the quarter, the Bears are forced to punt. Bretkowski boots. Doak Walker picks up the pigskin on his own 30. The dapper Doker is off to the races on one of his famous scoring scampers. Score now, Lions 41, Bears 23. Late in the game, a desperation pass by Chicago's Zeke Breskowski is picked off by the Lions' Sherwin Gandy and returned deep in the Bear country. Doak Walker caps a great afternoon as he outsprints the Bears to pay dirt. 
as the Lions begin their quest for a third consecutive world championship by downing the Bears 48-23. Off to a successful start, the Lions next were host to one of the Giants from the West, the Los Angeles Rams. The 1953 world champion, Detroit Lions, currently the Western Conference leaders, put their undefeated record to a supreme test against the once-tied Los Angeles Rams at Briggs Stadium in the Motor City. The first time the Lions get the ball, they march right into Ramland. Lou Carpenter's the man as he makes it to the 38. Tom Dublinski at quarterback for Detroit, teams up with Bill Bowman for a 17-yard pass completion on the Los Angeles 21. There's no let-up in the Lions' advance as they go to the 15 on Lou Carpenter's plunge through tackle. Billy Bowman's called on again, and it almost turns into the wrong number. Teammate Lou Creekmer recovers the fumble, and it's still the Lions' ball with another first down on the eight. The Lions roar on to the one-yard line before Lou Carpenter's brought down by a herd of Rams. Tom Dublinski sneaks into the end zone for a touchdown, and Detroit takes a 7-0 lead over Los Angeles. The Rams retaliate with an offensive of their own. Norm Van Brocklin hits Bob Boyd with a perfect pitch that's good for a 22-yard gain. Counting on the expert passing of Norm Van Brocklin, the Rams step off another big chunk of ground as Deacon Dan Taller goes all the way to the Detroit 28 before he's brought to earth. The Lions dig in, and the Rams attempt a field goal. Les Richter boots the ball right between the uprights, and at the end of the first quarter, it's a 7-3 game in favor of Detroit. Midway through the second period, it looks like the Rams are on the march again. Van Brocklin teams up with Elroy Crazy Legs Hirsch for a 17-yard completion. Watch Van Brocklin's faking on this one before passing to Boyd to bring the ball to the Detroit 27. Once more, the champions hold, and Les Richter steps back for another three-point try. Only this time, it's no good, and the score stands at 7-3. With but minutes remaining in the half, the Lions start to eat up the yardage as big Leon Hart takes a shovel pass and goes all the way to the Los Angeles 32. On the next play, Tom Dublinski's very low pass is picked off by the Rams' Harlan Spar, and the Lions' threat is halted. Possession of the ball turns into a temporary thing for the Rams as Van Brocklin's pass is intercepted by Billy Stitz. But the effort's in vain as the clock runs out on the half with Detroit still holding a 7-3 lead over Los Angeles. The third quarter starts off with a bang. The Rams' Van Brocklin throws from his own 15. Billy Stitz makes his second important interception. He laterals to Carl Karlovitz who goes all the way for the second Detroit touchdown. The Lions increase their lead to 14 to three. Moments later, the Rams bounce back and initiate another drive with a 12 yard advance by Tank Younger. Norm Van Brocklin and Crazy Legs Hirsch team up again to bring the ball into Lion territory. And it's a first down for the Rams on the Detroit 39. At the 20, the Lions stand pat. Les Richter tries another field goal, but it's too wide, and the game goes into the last period with the scoreboard still reading 14-3 Lions. The Detroit Lions add insult to injury as Lou Carpenter outsprints the opposition and goes for 60 yards and a score. With this 21-3 victory over the Rams, Detroit takes a firm hold on the top spot in the Western Conference, and the Rams, for the first time in 55 games, fail to score a touchdown. The Lions beat the Baltimore Colts in a night game, and then came the San Francisco 49ers. Kizar Stadium is crammed to overflowing for the battle between the two titans of the Western Conference, the undefeated Detroit Lions, and the once-tied San Francisco 49ers. The 49ers can take over the Western Conference lead by dumping the Detroiters. On the second play of the game, Hugh McElhenney bursts through the Lion line and streaks downfield. Not a lion can bring them down, and the 49ers jump away to a 7-0 lead over Detroit. A field goal makes it 10-0, and the 49ers aren't finished.
A punt gives them possession, and Y.A. Tittle tosses to John Henry Johnson. John Henry jolts the Detroiters for 34 yards as San Francisco moves to the Lion 24. Johnson, the 49ers' fabulous freshman, plows through the Lions to polish off a drive with a touchdown and boosts the San Francisco first quarter lead to 17-0 over Detroit. The Lions battle back as Dorn Dibble shags Bobby Lane's jump pass to move to his own 47. From the San Francisco 39, the Lions bite off 11 more yards. Lane lost the sideline pass that's pulled in by Judd Girard on the 49er 28 as the first quarter ends. Bobby Lane opens the second period by passing the Lions onto the scoreboard with a touchdown bullet to Jim Doran. San Francisco 17, Detroit 7. Y.A. Tittle, playing with his left hand in a cast, keeps the prospectors on the prowl. His perfectly placed pass to Bill Jessup puts the 49ers on the Detroit 11. With the Lions looking for a ground play, Tittle crosses them up with a pass to Billy Wilson for a touchdown. Detroit closes out the first half of the field goal, and after 30 minutes of wide open football, it's San Francisco 24, Detroit 10. The Lions have played 16 games without a defeat, and Bobby Lane sets out to keep the string unsnapped as he passes to Doak Walker from deep in Detroit territory. Walker weaves his way through the 49ers to the San Francisco 32 for a gain of 55 yards. A trap play springs Hunchy Horsemeyer loose for a 12-yard pickup as the Lions close in. From three yards out, Tom Dublinski lobs into the end zone to Jim Doran, and the Lions creep up on the 49ers at 24 to 17. But the prospectors won't hold still for any comebacks. They send John Henry Johnson on a bruising cruise to the Detroit 37. Tittle touches off another charge of 49er dynamite. He passes in the flat to Joe Perry, who powers to the Detroit three-yard line. John Henry Johnson explodes into the end zone as the prospectors blast loose another touchdown from the reluctant Lions to make it 49ers 31, Detroit 17 at the end of the third period. Last week, it was Hurricane Hazel in the east. This week, it's Hurricane U in the west. Hurricane U. McElhenney of the 49ers, cutting a path through the Lions for 34 yards to the Detroit 41. Before the Motor City men can recover from that blow, Tittle teams up with Billy Wilson on a 35-yard touchdown strike that makes it San Francisco 37, Detroit 17 early in the fourth quarter. The Lions come right back from the kickoff. Tom Dublinski, Swings out to his left and finally lets a down and outer go that Walker feels on the 49er, 29. Dublinski is riddling the 49er defense. He hits Dorn Dibble and the Lions are on the San Francisco, too. Horsemeyer slams across as the Lions march 53 yards in three plays to make it San Francisco 37, Detroit 24. Later in the period, Tom Dublinski engineers another Lion drive with a pass to Darn Dibble as Detroit struggles desperately to narrow the gap. From 12 yards out, Dublinski connects with Walker for a touchdown to make it San Francisco 37, Detroit 31. But that's the final count as the 49ers make it 16 in a row without a loss to become the only undefeated team in professional football. San Francisco now holds undisputed possession of the Western Conference lead. Bouncing back from their first defeat of the season, the Lions played one of their greatest games against the Los Angeles Rams. The Los Angeles Rams, needing a victory to remain in contention for the Western Conference title, have their work cut out as they catch the world champion Detroit Lions on the rebound from their first defeat. Nearly 75,000 partisan fans cheer wildly in the opening period as the Rams' Skeet Quinlan scoots 23 yards to the Detroit 39.
Ram razzle dazzle, Days is Detroit. Tank Younger takes the ball and wheels around then for 28 yards to score for Los Angeles. Rams lead seven to nothing. Detroit's Bob Horschmeyer packs the pigskin nine yards to the Los Angeles 21 as the Lions counter. The Los Angeles line holds firm from here, but Doak Walker delivers a 33-yard field goal that cuts the Los Angeles lead to seven to three. A Los Angeles pass, Norman Van Brocklin to Tom Fears, sears the Lions secondary and the ball's on the Detroit 14. The Rams crank their tank and Younger powers through the Detroit line for his second touchdown. At the end of the first period, Los Angeles is on top, 14 to three. In the second quarter, the Rams' Van Brocklin punt from his own end zone. It's a very poor kick which travels only 11 yards and the Lions take over on the Los Angeles 17. Detroit takes advantage of this opportunity. Bobby Lane rifles a, a strike to Dorn Dibble who dives into pay dirt. Score now, Rams 14, Lions 10. Watch this play closely. Now the Rams have the ball, and now they don't. Leon Hart steals the pigskin from Skeet Quinlan, and the lumbering Lion lineman lopes to a touchdown. This fast turn of event gives Detroit a 17 to 14 halftime margin. Detroit sets out to increase its advantage in the second half. Lane passes to Jim Darn, who goes out on the Rams 27. Another lane to Doran toss is good for 11 yards. The Lions are stopped on the Los Angeles 16, but Doak Walker has the answer. The Doker's second field goal boosts Detroit's lead to 20 to 14. A Ram rally gets underway as Skeet Quinlan totes for 10 yards. Norman Van Brocklin, the leading passer in professional football, teams up with Elroy Hirsch on a beautiful 42-yard play that carries to the Detroit four. Dan Taller takes the hog hide on a wide ride to the end of the line. Taller's TD gives the Rams a 21-20 lead going into the final period. Rampaging Rams roll on. Tank Younger does the damage here as he powers to the line 49. A timely toss from Norm Van Brocklin to Big Bob Boyd is good for a 32 yard advance for Los Angeles. Detroit puts a halt to the Ram assault, but Les Richter toes an 11-yard field goal, making a 24-20 Los Angeles leading. Lion halfback Luke Carpenter spearheads a Detroit rally as he races 32 yards to the Los Angeles four-yard line. Punchy Horschmeyer finds a hole in the Los Angeles line, and over he goes. Detroit comes from behind to win 27-24, and this victory gives the Lions the undisputed lead in the Western Conference. Following the Rams game, the Lions beat the Colts for the second time and were more than ready for the rematch with the mighty 49ers. A record brick stadium crowd in excess of 58,000 gathers to cheer the world champion Detroit Lions as the current kingpins of the Western Division take on the San Francisco 49ers. Earlier this year, San Francisco dealt Detroit its only defeat of the season. From the opening kickoff, it's obvious that the fired up Lions are out to avenge that setback. Detroit's Sherwin Gandy hits Billy Tidwell so hard that Tidwell fumbles. Jungle Jim Martin recovers for the Lions deep in 49er territory. Martin's fumble recovery sets up a 34 yard field goal by Doak Walker and Detroit takes the lead. The next time they get the ball, the Lions are on the prowl for another score. Bobby Lane passes complete to Doak Walker, and the Doker dances and prances to the Prospector's 26. Walker fumbles, but Dorn Dibble drops on the ball for Detroit. 
Hard running halfback Hutchie Horsmeyer hustles around and to the San Francisco five. Bobby Lane makes like a burglar as he sneaks through the 49ers for a touchdown. With the game not yet six minutes old, Detroit leads 10 to nothing. The Bay City 11 is held at bay by a stubborn Lion defense and the 49ers Pete Brown punts. Doke Walker dazzles the huge crowd with a dandy 47 yard run back that comes to a halt on the San Francisco 23. Detroit fans roar for a score and Bobby Lane answers with a letter perfect pass to Jim Dorn. It's Detroit 17 nothing and the 49ers are stunned. San Francisco can't cage the Lions today. Bobby Lane sets the Detroit offense on fire again with a pass to huge Leon Hart that nets 24 yards. Walker gets the call and the dashing Doker carries the ball 18 yards deeper into prospector territory. The 49ers brace but they can't cope with Walker's kicking. Doak delivers another field goal, giving Detroit a startling 20 to nothing first quarter advantage. In the second period, the prospectors pass. But Tittle's try goes awry as Laverne Targeson intercepts and lumbers 33 yards before he stopped in San Francisco territory. Targeson's timely interception is turned into a touchdown when Bobby Lane finds Judd Gerard all alone at the goal line. At halftime, it's Detroit 27, San Francisco nothing. The Motor City machine maintains its tarred pace in the third period. Horsemeyer heaves a long pass that grabs by Doak Walker, and the play covers 66 yards for still another touchdown. The Lions now lead 34 to nothing. San Francisco can do nothing, but the Lions are doing everything. Watch this. Tom Dublinski's screen pass is nabbed by Billy Bowman. Behind excellent blocking, Bowman is off on a scintillating 66-yard sally that goes for a tally. Detroit's laying it on. The Lions lead San Francisco 41 to nothing after three periods. San Francisco's rookie quarterback, Maury Duncan, pilots a prospector drive. John Henry Johnson takes Duncan's pitch out and passes to Billy Wilson to save San Francisco from a shutout, but the 49ers trail 41-7. The Lions just won't let up. Billy Bowman breaks through the prospector forward wall and sprints 43 yards for a touchdown. Detroit displaying true championship form and San Francisco the worst defeat in its history, 48-7, and the Lions appear headed toward another Western Conference crown. Next came two games with the Green Bay Packers. Winning by just four points in the first one, the Lions looked for and got a close battle in the traditional Thanksgiving Day game. Professional football's Thanksgiving Day Classic brings together the league-leading and world champion Detroit Lions and the unpredictable Green Bay Packers before a capacity crowd in Briggs Stadium, Detroit. Green Bay's Tobin Root gets the holiday hassle rolling with a perfect pass to Floyd Reed that sets the Packers up on the Lion 48. Rote keeps the Lions confused by turning right end and then giving a last minute lateral to Floyd Reed. The flashy Packer halfback picks up his blockers and threads his way for 48 yards and a Green Bay touchdown. It's Green Bay seven, Detroit nothing. The league leading Lions lash back. Bobby Lane finds Bobby Horschmeyer and the former Indiana sensation legs it 13 yards to the Detroit 42 as the first quarter ends. The second quarter brings no change in Lions' plans. This time, the pass goes from Lane to Dorn Dibble, and the ball rests on the Packer 29. Bullseye Bobby strikes for his 100th TD pass. His receiver is dependable Doak Walker, and Detroit ties Green Bay. The troublesome Packers waste no time roaring back. Tobin Road fades to his right, but throws to his left. Howard Ferguson is there to take the pigskin to the Lion 14.
Throat fires again. Gene White pulls it in, and the Packers threaten on the line five-yard line. Root wraps up the Packer drive by pushing over from the one, and Green Bay leads Detroit 14 to seven. With the first half running out, the Packers are on the move again. A hard charging Lion line presses Tobin Root, and his hasty pass is stolen by Jack Christensen. Christensen weaves his way into the end zone. The game is tied at 14 to 14 at the half. The start of the third period brings trouble to Detroit. Bobby Lane's pass falls into the arms of Green Bay's Clayton Tonemaker, and the Packers set up camp on the Lion 25. Detroit holds until Fred Cohn's field goal attempt splits the uprights, and the Packers take the lead for the third time. Score, 17 to 14. Later in the period, Bobby Lane gets his Lions touchdown hungry with a quick pass to Dorn Devil. The Detroit end displays some fancy footwork, and the Lions roll to the Green Bay 10. Bobby Lane tosses to Lou Carpenter, and Detroit takes the lead away from Green Bay. It's the Lions 21, the Packers 17. Just a few minutes later, disaster strikes Green Bay again. Detroit's Jack Christensen takes a Packer punt on his 40-yard line, heads down the middle, and outruns the Green Bay defenders for a 60-yard touchdown. Detroit leads the Green Bay Packers 28 to 17. The touchdown pack third period comes to an exciting end. Green Bay's Tobin Road hits Max McGee for 82 yards and a Packer TD. With one period left to play, Green Bay trails the champion Lions 28-24. The final quarter brings a Packer chance to win. Tobin Road tosses to Al Carmichael in the clear, but the Green Bay back can hold the slippery ball, and the Packers lose the game. Detroit strengthens its first place standing with a thrill-packed 28-24 victory over the Green Bay Packers. On December the 5th, the Lions played a 13-13 tie with the Eagles and clinched the championship of the Western Division. They finished out the regular season by losing to the Chicago Bears and coming from behind to whip the Browns in the snow at Cleveland. And who will ever forget the drama unfolded in that game? Here's the way it looked to me. This is not a scene from Siberia, but the snow-covered tundra of Cleveland's Municipal Stadium which provides the frost-bitten setting as the Browns and the Lions meet in a driving snowstorm. More than 34,000 loyal and hardy Cleveland fans turn out in spite of the weather. The Lions have the ball, but not for long, as it's jarred loose from the grasp of Bill Bowman. And John Kissel recovers for Cleveland on the Detroit six-yard line. Browns go right to work on the break. Maurice Bassett, the Browns' big fullback, carries to the four-yard line. Jet Hanulak gets a pitch out and mushes around left end. He can't quite make it all the way as the Lions pull him down on the one-foot line. A frigid array of photographers get set as Detroit digs in. Otto Graham hammers across on a quarterback sneak, and Cleveland leads Detroit 7 to nothing. Bobby Lane gets the Lions on the move in the second period with a short toss to Leon Hart. The lumbering Leon skates through the slush for 32 yards, but the half ends with Cleveland still on top, 7 to nothing. Courageous band faces the weather to entertain the crowd at halftime. In the third quarter, the Lions get their attack thought out as Doak Walker dazzles the denizens of Cleveland with a dandy dash around right in. Billy Bowman bucks for four yards as Detroit keeps moving.
Bobby Lane fakes a shovel pass, then flips to Bowman on the screen pass. And Billy barrels through the snow to the Brown 40-yard line. Now watch Bobby Lane work the sneak for eight important yards as the Lions charge goal. In spite of the bad footing and the slippery ball, Lane goes to the air again. Dorn Dibble makes a sure-handed catch, and the Lions tie it up at 7-7 in the third quarter. Before the period is over, the Browns strike back. Otto Graham fires, and Chet Hanulak makes a great grab to put Cleveland on its own 37. Seconds later, Burley Maurice Bassett brings the ball to midfield. The Browns can penetrate no further than the Detroit 41, but they have Lou Groza. In spite of the snow and poor visibility, Lou calmly swings his leg and toes the ball 43 yards for the field goal that puts Cleveland in front of Detroit 10 to 7. Early in the fourth quarter, Bobby Lane hangs on to the ball and turns in the best run of the day as he lopes for 30 yards through the deepening snow. The Browns brace, and Doak Walker attempts a field goal. And it's no good. That three-point Cleveland lead begins to look pretty good. Late in the fourth quarter, the Browns still lead, but Bobby Lane begins to snow the Clevelanders under with passes. This one is to Jeb Girard for 18 yards. Girard makes a diving, rolling catch of another lane toss as the Lions move 14 yards closer to the goal line. Lane picks out Doak Walker this time, and the dapper Doker doesn't want to quit as he fights to the Brown 26. Lane fires over the middle to Jug Girard on the 10 as the Lions move on six completions out of seven. Bobby makes it seven out of eight and racks up a victory for Detroit. His target is Jug Girard for a last minute touchdown. The final score reads Detroit 14, Cleveland 10. That then was all for the 1954 regular season. The Lions finished with a record of nine wins, two losses, and a tie, and reigned as champions of the Western Division for the third year in a row. These film highlights have been another presentation of the Goble Brewing Company. Now, hoping you enjoyed the action, this is Van Patrick saying so long for Goble until next season.